In this video, we're going to be revisiting digraphs. So um, before you watch this one, you may want to go back and watch video number three, which was our very brief introduction to digraphs. And you should also read pages 161 through 163 in the textbook, which will give you some of the basic terminology. Um, so remember, digraph stands for directed graph. And for any directed graph, we can consider the underlying graph, G. OK, so let's just do that really quickly. So here we have a directed graph, right? Some vertices and some arcs. Um, and so it, if you had to take a guess at what the underlying graph would be, maybe you want to just pause the video and think about that for a second. Um, but it's a pretty intuitive definition. So if this, for example, in purple is my, uh, my directed graph, then the underlying graph is going to be the the graph that I get if I replace all the arcs with edges, right? So essentially I'm just erasing all of the directions. Okay, so this would be the underlying graph for this directed graph, which makes perfect sense, right? Um, but you, it turns out, as we're going to see later in this video, um, the underlying graph and its structure um, sometimes give you information about what you can say about the directed graph. But let's table that for now. Um, okay, so let's go back to a definition that you should have read about, which is strong or strongly connected. So I just want to illustrate the way to sort of think about this type of problem. So recall from the book that a digraph is strong if for every pair of vertices, so for example, V1 and V2, there should be a V1, V2 path and a V2, V1 path. And that should be true for every set of vertices. So that should be true, for example, for V4 and V2, and V4 and V6, and V5 and V3. Um, so we want to ask ourselves, right, just to get a feeling for this definition a little bit, is this graph strong? So again, you may want to pause the video and think about this for a second. And the answer here is going to be no. And the reason is, if you look at these three edges, right, essentially if you want to think about there's sort of like this is a system of pipes, and if there's like water flowing around in these pipes, then all the water is eventually just going to get pushed to this left-hand side. So, for example, if you start at vertex number one, there's no way to find a V1, V2 path, or a V1, V6 path, or a V1, V3 path. Because if such a path existed, it would have to travel across one of these edges, but all of these edges are pointing in the wrong direction, right? So there is a V1, V5 path, right? You could just take this to this, right? Like this followed by this, and those are the right directions. Similarly, there's a V5, V1 path, so that's fine. So among these three in this sort of little triangle over here, that's, you're not going to have any issue with being strong here. There's always going to be bi-directional paths between any two vertices. And among these three, you're always going to get bi-directional paths, also because you sort of have this little triangle, right, that's just letting you flow from one to the other. So like, for example, I can go from V6 to V3 to V2, and that's a V6, V2 path, uh, and I can go from V2 to V6. And that's a V2, V6 path. The issue is, for example, I can take a V2, V1 path, just this single edge. But now, if I want to go from V1 to V2, there's no way to do it. Okay, so, no, for example, there is no V1, V2 path. Right, and all it takes is one pair of vertices where this fails and you're not strong. Okay, the real purpose of this video is we want to think about a question that we've revisited before, and that's when a graph is Eulerian, except now we want to consider a, when is a directed graph Eulerian. So remember the definition of Eulerian is there is an Eulerian circuit, right, and an Eulerian circuit is one that uses all the edges, Euler and E, right? That's the mnemonic device there. So one that uses all the edges. So I want to be able to start at one of my vertices. So for example, is this graph 
um, here, D in blue, is this Eulerian. So the question is, can I start at one of my vertices and travel around using every single edge, except now they're arcs, using every single arc in this directed graph and end up back where I started? Okay, so you may want to pause the video and just play around with this for a second and see if you can figure out the answer. It turns out that this one is Eulerian. Um, so I'm just going to justify this by showing you an Eulerian circuit. So let's just start at this vertex. So we'll take this edge first, uh, and then we'll go here, and then here, and then here, here, here. Then we're going to go up and travel around this triangle. And then now we're back where we started. And we used up every single edge exactly once while traveling in the appropriate direction, right? Because if you want a circuit or a cycle or anything like that in a directed graph, you always have to travel the edges in the appropriate way. Okay, so is this graph Eulerian? Yes, it is, right? We just found an Eulerian circuit. But you don't necessarily want to just have to look for these um, and find an explicit one to know whether or not it's going to work. So you might recall from one of our previous videos that we had a really easy test for determining when a regular graph was Eulerian, and that was you just have to look at the degrees. You look at the degree and see if they're all even, and when all the degrees are even, then it's Eulerian. Well now, degree's not quite as straightforward as it used to be, right? So like if you read in the textbook, we now have in degree and out degree. So for example, the end degree of this vertex is two, because there are two edges that are sort of flowing into this vertex, and the out degree is two. Um, for, or for example, for this one, the end degree is one, right? The out degree is one. So we want to figure out when is a digraph going to be Eulerian. So first of all, here's a sort of quick check, which is if you have a digraph and you consider its underlying graph G, well, if G is not Eulerian in the first place, there's no way the directed graph is going to be Eulerian. So let's think about that for just a second. Right, so imagine the underlying graph here, if we erased all of, all of the directions on our edges. So I'm just going to rough sketch it here. This is a very rough sketch. Right, the degrees here would be 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 2. So because the degrees of all of these are even, this is an Eulerian graph. Now that doesn't necessarily tell you automatically that the directed version is Eulerian, but it will tell you if it's not Eulerian, right? If this graph isn't Eulerian, there's no way that when you put directions on the edges, suddenly you're going to be able to travel all the edges, right? Because here you can travel either direction on the edges. So now you're sort of more restricted with these directions. But that is sort of a quick check um, to let you know whether or not it's even possible. Okay, so if the underlying graph is not Eulerian, then certainly the digraph isn't either. But that's not quite good enough. Ideally, we would like something that was like what we had last time, this sort of easy check for um, the degrees of the vertices. And there is an easy check, it turns out. And you might want to ask yourself what that easy check is. So remember, now we don't just have degrees anymore, we have in degrees and out degrees. So if you want to, to pause the video just to consider, um, when will, what do we have to know about the in degrees and the out degrees to know that the directed graph is Eulerian? And I'll give you a hint, it's not that the in degree and the out degree have to be even, right? For example, this has in degree one and out degree one, but it's still Eulerian. So you may want to pause and ask yourself this question. Okay, before I give you the answer, let's just consider what's happening. Um, so I'm going to make ordered pairs on every vertex where the in degree is the first number and the out degree is the second number. Okay, so here that's going to be 1, 1, right? In degree is 1, out degree is 1. Here it's going to be 2, 2, right? 2 in degrees, 2 out degrees. Here it will also be, right, in, in, out, out, so 2, 2. Here it'll be 1, 1. Here it'll be, okay, 1 in, 2 in, 1 out, 2 out. So 2 in, 2 out. And here it's also going to be 2 in, 2 out, right? Out, out, in, in. 
So do you want to take a guess now maybe at what it's going to be? It's that for every vertex, the number of edges pointing in has to equal this number of edges going out. And that should make sense, right? If you remember why this was true for regular graphs, why you needed an even degree for every vertex, it was because if you imagine traveling around to every vertex, every time you visit a vertex, you use one edge going in and one edge going out. One edge going in, one edge going out, so you're always sort of burning two edges when you visit a vertex. Well, so that's still ra that rationale is exactly what makes this true, right? You need to be able to go to the vertex and leave the vertex the same number of times. So here you can uh, visit this vertex twice and leave it twice. You can visit this vertex once and leave it once. And that's exactly the same type of criteria that we needed for regular graphs, except we didn't have directions, so all we had to do was count edges because you could go in or out from either edge. Well, now there are certain edges on which you can travel in and certain edges on which you can travel out, but the same rationale holds. So that's our next theorem. A connected digraph is Eulerian if and only if the in degree of a vertex equals the out degree of a vertex for every vertex. Okay, so it turns out we do have a nice neat little test to tell us. So let's just check these out really quick. Um, using these two theorems above here, we're going to answer... Uh, whether a couple of graphs are Eulerian or not. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll start with the one in teal, and then we'll do the one in purple. So you may want to pause the video and just see if you can figure these out yourselves. Okay, so we'll start with the one in teal. Is this Eulerian? No, it sure isn't. If you think about the underlying graph, So I'm just rough sketching here. This is the underlying graph, and the degrees are 4, 4, 3. Right? That's not allowed. This underlying graph is not Eulerian because not all the degrees are even. So that means that, of course, the digraph is not Eulerian. If you can't even do it when you don't have restrictions on the directions, there's no way you can do it when you do have direct restrictions on the directions. Right, so this no, because the underlying graph is not Eulerian, right? That's what our theorem above in green said. Okay, well, how about this one? So again, you might want to pause or think about it. And it turns out for this one, the answer is yes, because let's go through and put in degree, out degree. So 2 in, 2 out, 2, 2, 1 in, 1 out, 1 in, 1 out, 1 in, 1 out, 2 in, 2 out. This one has 1, 2 coming in, 1, 2 going out. Uh, and then this one has 1 in one out, right? One edge going in, one edge going out. So because the in degree, right, the in degree and out degree match, for every vertex. So this tells us that this is Eulerian. Right? And we could find an Eulerian circuit if we want. I mean, it's not too hard. Just like when you want to find an Eulerian circuit in a regular graph, basically you just take any choice that doesn't, um, that doesn't cut off the rest of the graph. So, for example, we can take this edge, and then this edge, and then this one, 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 wrapping around the outside, and this will finish us up. So this one is Eulerian. So these two theorems, right, give you a couple of quick checks. Um, so this one you should just be able to use at a glance, right? You can just sort of look at the underlying graph and think about the total degrees of the vertices. Uh, and if they aren't all even, then that's an immediate answer, no, there's no way for it to be Eulerian. But if the underlying graph is Eulerian, then you have to check, okay, well, are the in-degree and out-degrees the same? So this is our first... Um, video talking about directed graphs. In the next video, we'll explore a particular kind of directed graph called a tournament.